Hi everyone, this is Ravi. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm receiving a lot of requests to post more YouTube videos on Tricentis Tasca. So however, uh, here is our lesson eight on Tricentis Tasca. So in this YouTube session, I'm going to cover the topics. What are all the different action modes that are available in Tasca and how do we steer the tables by using Tasca? So this is a very important topic. Please subscribe to my channel. Click on bell icon so that you'll receive notifications whenever I post a new videos on Tasca. Thank you. Okay, our first agenda item is action modes. To steer an application by using Tasca or to steer a control by using Tasca, you need to instruct Tasca what to do. Okay, so this is what the action mode does. So basically you can specify what kind of action that you would like to perform for a control for the given value. Okay, so in my previous session, I have already covered one of the action mode called input right how do we use input action mode so in this session i'm going to cover how can we use action mode select and how do we use action mode buffer and also how can we use an action mode called verify so later sessions i'm going to cover constraint and wait on but we are not going to cover uh, an action mode insert in this particular uh, session or in this entire sessions okay because insert is used for non UI applications okay so first of all what is the action mode input we already discussed in my previous sessions and coming to action mode select so selects this particular action mode when you use this action mode which selects the control to be used without any additional actions okay and then coming to action mode buffer, the action mode buffer saves a variable value from the system under test application to a local buffer. That means, so whenever you test for any test case, right? So at the end of your test case, you, you will be having some validation points, right? So you need to verify something that you that is really expected behavior or not right so to do so so you will be you will need to buffer the values you will need to store some of the values in particular variable so that you can verify at end of your test case right so that is the reason we'll use buffer action mode and action mode verify so this action mode checks the values of properties in a system under test application that means at end of your test case you would like to verify let's say some plain strings so you can simply verify plain strings and also if you want to verify integer you can verify the integers and let's say if you want to verify a property of a control so like inner text property of the control that you can verify basically let's say uh, after uh, purchasing the blue jeans the tax let's say there is a tax amount of ten dollars so you can verify the tax amount by using a control and the property of the control called inner text right so if you retrieve the inner text it shows you 10.00 so that is a tax right so that way you can verify your inner text properties or if you want to verify uh, visibility of a text or visibility of a control you can verify enablement of the control you can verify so any kind of properties that you would like to verify as part of your system under test then we'll be using action mode called verify okay so now let us understand what is action mode buffer with an example Okay, so if you see the application, so in our system under test application, 
So when I complete our <clears throat> order of the blue jeans, right? If I want to purchase the blue jeans, I'll be adding a blue jeans to shopping cart. And then once you complete checkout process, so you get the order confirmation. Okay, so where I would like to verify the price of the jeans which I have selected. So when I select this product, it shows me one dollar. But once I complete entire order, what is the total price that has been added for the jeans, right? So if, if I would like to verify price, how can I do? So let me go back to Tosca and let me just copy this entire folder here and then paste into the parent folder and then I would like to rename this folder as let's rename it as session okay lesson 8 okay so here as we are talking about uh, the verification of the product so for me it's a uh, checkout pro oh, sorry order product under order product if I see order blue jeans okay while ordering the blue jeans so okay let me just delete because I already worked on this so I just want to show you how to work on this particular product okay so now so if I would like to verify a price right price of the blue jeans so what I will do first I have to store the expected result correct so while ordering the blue jeans while ordering the blue jeans I see the price of the blue jeans as one dollar correct so now in generally most of the objects will have a default properties for Tosca so Tosca shows you some default properties for most of the controls but for some of the controls like a container so this is a container because if i see here this is a container but if you see here this is a button and all the, these right for these button and all so you you will have default properties like click property right so because this is a button but for container you will not have a default properties for this you need to specify your property that you would like to store okay so here let's assume i would like to store a property called inner text here i'll be selecting that and then i would like to store this particular inner text property into a variable okay you just need to specify variable price blue jeans basically p as in uh, capital letter b capital letter j capital letter with no spaces you should not have a spaces okay i would like to store an inner text of price container into a variable called price blue jeans so as soon as you specify and then what is your action mode my action mode is buffer okay so here now i have a quantity the total quantity of blue jeans are 25 and price of each blue jeans which I am storing in a buffer called price blue jeans okay so this is how you can store a property of a control into buffer okay so now I have stored a price of blue jeans, blue jeans into a buffer called price blue jeans now I'm gonna tell you how can we use this stored variable buffer while validating your actual test case while verifying the test case okay so that i'm going to show you now and before i uh, move to verify action mode let me tell you one more thing so whatever the buffer of uh, price blue jeans right basically we are storing the price of the blue jeans in this particular variable so where does this buffer store so if we go to project and then if you go to settings and then if you go to engine so under engine there is a folder called buffer so under this folder all the buffer values will be stored any buffer value that you are storing that will be stored under this buffer folder under settings engine folder okay so so 
So right now it is not showing the buffer value here because I did not run this particular test case. So when if I run this test case in a scratch book, right, in a scratch book, then it's going to store the buffer value to that particular location. Okay. Okay. So now let us discuss uh, action mode verify with an example. Okay. So if when I select a product and then I continue my checkout process, right, in my system under test, I generally have to select the shipping method as well. So here I, I have uh, basically ground, next day air, second day air, right. So if I select uh, the shipping method as ground, so right, and then continue. So then once I continue to the checkout process, so I would like to verify when I select this shipping method as ground, whether it is charging me $10 or not. Okay, that is my validation point. Okay, so basically <clears throat> verify action mode is used in every test case wherever you would like to validate a test step. Okay, so for every test case, so there is a meaningful test case, right? It is a meaningful test case only if you have some validation point, right? So, so this verify action mode can verify direct numeric values, integer values, or it can also verify the properties of a control like inner text, visible, exist, right? If the object is exist or not, if the control is visible or not, or if you want to verify the inner text, so you can verify all these properties along with the numeric and string values, okay? So let me show how do we use uh, numeric or string values. Uh, basically, how can we verify the numeric or string value? So in this case, as I told you, <coughs> when I select the shipping method as ground, it should charge me only $10, not less than, not less, not more, right? So I would like to validate that. How can I do that? So let me go back to Tasker. So now I'm in verify the prices. Basically, I'm in verify the prices module under verify prices module. So I'm going to explain these uh, tables. Uh, basically, is table steering after this, uh, basically, once I cover the concept of verify, okay? So here, so to verify, to basically verify my string value or an integer value where the shipping method is $10, right? What I need to do, you just go to Tosca where I have selected my shipping method, okay? I've selected the shipping method and I would like to verify this as 10.00 i'm providing the value of 10.00 and here i'm not inputting here i'm selecting the action mode as verify so now whenever i run this test step what happens it is gonna retrieve the value this value it is gonna retrieve this value and then it is gonna compare against the value what I provided 10.00 okay it basically retrieves the value from shipping method and it is going to verify as 10.00 but one more thing is here you have to make sure the data type let's assume if I mention the string as it is right if the application is developed in a such a way that your ground total the basically the shipping method ground is retrieved as 10 in case let's assume 10 okay if it displays 10 then your test is going to fail because you selected this as a string and i'm actually comparing against 10.00 right so if you want to handle both the scenarios if it is a 10 or 10.00 better you change the data type as numeric so that Tosca considers 10.00 as a 10, okay, number, as a number, okay. So this is how you can basically 
verify any numeric value from your application right and you can validate the test okay so how can we handle dynamic values basically if if there is uh, in the application for example let me show you for example this is your total correct this total is sum of your shipping cost ground shipping cost price of your blue jeans and your quantity of the blue jeans correct so to validate this total price one thing is you have to retrieve the buffer value that has been stored in price right and then multiply by your quantity that you have entered right so now how can you use the verify action mode for the dynamic values okay let me explain okay so now let's see in tasca tool how to validate our uh, dynamic values basically how can you verify the dynamic values okay for that let's see our subtotal okay so now i would like to verify the subtotal for which i have ordered the quantity of the blue jeans correct so what is my subtotal my subtotal is actually the price of each blue jeans multiplied by your total quantity of the blue jeans correct so earlier while ordering our blue jeans right earlier we already stored the price of the blue jeans like inner text of the control inner text of the control which is a price of the blue jeans correct we already stored that in blue uh, price blue jeans variable right okay i'm just copying that price blue jeans variable okay so now we would like to verify the subtotal is correct or not basically whether it is the price of the blue jeans that means 1 multiply by 50 which is 50 dollar okay but now i don't want to do that so i want to basically use the price that has been stored in buffer value okay how can we do that okay for that first of all how to retrieve basically how can you call a buffer I already explained to you I think in my previous uh, sessions there is a syntax for buffer okay to call the buffer curly braces capital B so if you see which returns the value stored in your specified buffer okay capital B and then in square brackets you just need to provide the variable that you have stored i've stored the price of the blue jeans in variable called price blue jeans correct and close your square brackets and close the curly braces so if you see here i'm basically retrieving i'm calling a price of the blue jeans but but my subtotal is not equivalent to price of the blue jeans what is the subtotal my subtotal is multiplication of your quantity with the price of the blue jeans so hence i have to combine the math function here okay so what is my math function earlier as i explained you in my previous sessions i already explained you the math function right for that you have to open the curly braces so it automatically populates the math function okay and then open square braces and here i'm actually oh okay i'm actually calling the price of one blue jeans correct price of the blue jeans okay and here i would like to multiply by the quantity because i have ordered 50 jeans right so i'm multiplying the quantity and close the curly braces and close the square brackets okay so here this is how you can basically use your dynamic values verification okay how what i am doing here let me explain again 
I'm calling a math function and then I'm calling the buffer and multiplying the buffer with the quantity of the blue jeans. Okay. And here your action mode should be verify. Okay. So that means, so if let's assume your price has been changed, for example, you, you if you select the product, some other product, then the price might be three dollars right so that three dollars three dollars will be stored here and again the same three dollars will be called here three multiply by 50 it is going to compare okay in this case one multiply by 50 which is 50 so if it matches if the subtotal matches to 50 then this test step will be passed otherwise it is going to fail the test step okay hope you understand right how to use your verify action mode if you would like to verify a simple numeric values or if you would like to verify string values or if you would like to verify a some dynamic values in the system under application okay so what is our next agenda item our next agenda item is steering a table by using tosca so what does a table means so generally when a developer builds an application he defines HTML tables within the pages right for example if you go to if we go to the demo web shop if you come down so this one this entire text basically this uh, subtotal shopping method payment method everything has been stored under a table if you use an X scan okay uh, I already explained you in my I think second session on X scan right if you go ahead and uh, do a X scan on this particular object what you will see is you will see a table that has been recognized by the X scan okay when you click on that table it will show you the entire structure of the table if you see here you have subtotal right you have subtotal you have shipping you have tax and you have total same thing you can see in the application as well right so basically this entire content has been created under an html tag by a developer sorry under an html table under developer uh, under page so now how can you steer basically how can you verify all these values from a given html web table okay so let's go back to tasca okay to steer any web table first you need to go to the corresponding module and then click on the table that you would like to verify okay and so once you click on the table that you would like to verify okay all you need to do is either you have to select the required column or a row that you would like to validate basically the cell that you would like to validate let's assume i would like to validate the cell called subtotal which is a 50 dollar right for that what i'll do i'll be selecting the corresponding row called subtotal and then if you expand under subtotal again you will be selecting the corresponding cell number that means the corresponding row or column of a cell okay if i select a, uh, basically the cell value as pound one that means it considers the first row of your table if you select n basically it's nth row of the table right if you select last pound last it is a last row of the table right last row all column of this table okay and let's say i would like to enter it as a 25 dollars okay 25 dollars and if you instead of selecting a pound n right there is also 
uh, basically another method where you can select dollar one dollar two dollar n row okay what is the difference between dollar n and pound n okay the difference is if when i specify the cell value as pound one it basically considers the header it also consider the header of your table okay if i select this if i enter the cell value as dollar one that means it is going to consider the row first row after header of the table okay if i select dollar two it is going to consider a second row after your header of the table if i mention this as pound two it is going to consider it has a second row that's it that means which includes your header as well and that means the first row after your header okay so understand right so that's that's how you will be selecting your corresponding cell let's assume if you want to add another cell right what you do you just need to right click and then select create x test step value so which is going to create another cell and if you want to delete this right click and click on delete simple okay if you want to insert again you insert like this okay so and if let's say if i click on this number right if you see here when i click on the corresponding table any table what it is going to show it is going to show you the structure of your table basically it shows you the actual structure of your table as well under table tools basically under your table tools you have even table related actions okay and if you select the corresponding row or column it is going to show you the structure of that particular selected column or selected row basically the selected table or column so if i select entire table see it's showing me the entire table structure if i select a row of subtotal subtotal it is showing me the row of that particular subtotal okay so once once you select so let me again go back here okay once you select your corresponding row and then corresponding cell which you would like to verify and then you need to select the action mode if you would like to wait on until this value is appeared on the screen you can select wait on or if you want to verify this particular cell contains 25 dollars or not in in our case what is our subtotal 50 so that means i would like to verify the subtotal is displaying as 50 or not that's why i'll be selecting the action mode as verify okay so this way you can steer your html tables right by using tosca okay so i hope i have covered all the topics which are uh, uh, which i have mentioned for this particular session okay so what is our key takeaway one is what are all the different action modes that are available and we have verified i have teached you how to use the action mode called buffer buffer is to store any value into a corresponding variable so we'll be using buffer basically you if you want to store any value or any property of your system under test application then you can store them into a variable with the action mode buffer and then what is verify and verify is another action mode where which you will be using while validating any test step 
or while verifying any test basically you can perform verification of the strings verification of the numbers verification of the property of a particular control whether the prop control is visible whether the control is existing or not okay and then i have explained you on the html tables and how can we steer the html tables okay hope you understand all the concepts if you have any questions please leave the comments in your comment box and please subscribe to channel and click on bell icon so that you will receive more notifications whenever i publish the videos thank you